like you told me. Smell bad. Hey, board game maniacs. As promised, we're here to play Labyrinth. What you're going to see today is a complete playthrough from start to finish of the board game Labyrinth based off the 1986 movie with David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly into it. So excited for this, I promised that I would paint up all the miniatures even though there's only five miniatures. So I spent the time this week and I painted all the miniatures up. So now we have some people together. You're going to notice a couple of people. Katie right here, she's new. We have Thomas the Wolf. <laughs> hey guys. And we have Poison. Hey. So we're back again, play again. So just stand by, watch. If you haven't seen the unboxing video yet, just click on the link below. Watch that if you're interested in doing it. If not, just stay tuned and we'll go through the game. Okay, board game maniacs, we got the board set up to play. And you can see we have Sir Didymus with his fellow companion dog that he's riding. And what's the dog's name again? Ambrosius. Ambrosius, that's right. Okay, so we have Sir Didymus here and he's in a bog of eternal stench. You can see the board is labeled the shape of the cards that you lay down, but the Bog Eternal Stench got its own shape. And we also have Ludo over here into yeah, his spot. Say it right. What's that? Gotta say it right. Ludo! There you go. <laughs> All right, and then over here we have Sarah in the oubliette. And again, you can see the shape. It's different, it's the same shape as the Bog of Eternal Stench. And last but not least for the good guys is Hoggle. And he starts here, which is kind of like the entrance to the maze, but actually the oubliette is. And then right in the center of town, the Goblin City, is Jareth, which is the Goblin King. All right, starting off, uh, in the book we have a turn order. So the turn order is follows, Hoggle goes first, and I'm playing Hoggle. And you can see here for Hoggle, for his speed he uses a green die, his wit is a black die, and his brawn is a yellow die. And also, you have these tokens here, which are willpower tokens. As we go along in the game, we'll explain more and more about what that is. But with Hoggle, he has three willpower tokens to start the game off with. And he also has his special ability, Unexpected Bravery. Hoggle's special ability. Keep this Keep this card on your character sheet. I'm reading through the camera viewfinder, so just bear with me here, everybody. Once per game. Okay, I'm gonna read it this way instead, so make it easier. Ha <laughs> ha So, once per game, you can discard this card to roll an extra blue die for a failed brawn or wit test without losing a willpower token, as described on page 13 of the rulebook. Never despair. So again, that's a special ability. Now also, too, as well, <clears throat> is in the game, uh, if you want to create more of a difficult uh, a difficult game for everybody, you have what are called uh, failed or circumstance cards where you have to meet a certain circumstance before you can do anything else with your character. But since this is our first actual legit full game through play, I said that backwards, I'm back and talk words. <laughs> but, we're not playing that, we're just playing the basic part of the game and we're going to go from there. So again, just to show everybody, there's Hoggle right here. He's all painted up. He's looking all uh, Hogglicious. He's looking for yeah, Hoggle, Hoggle, Hoggle. Okay. So, let's go on and see what, else, what everybody else has and how to play it. Okay, we have Katie here. And Katie, what character are you playing? I've got Sir Didymus. Sir Didymus. And what is Sir Didymus's speed? Speed. Speed he's riding. I can't even talk right now. He, his speed is a black die, his wit is a yellow die, and his brawn is a purple die. And how many willpower does he have to start with? He starts with four. Alrighty, and what is his special ability? His special ability is charge. Once per game, um, I can discard this card to roll an extra blue die for a failed brawn test without losing the willpower token as described on page 13 of the rule book. Never despair. Awesome. And what is his dog's name? Can you remember? Yes, Ambrosius. That's right. Let's go, Ambrosius. <laughs> Whoa. It's kind of blurred. It's not getting in focus. There we go. So yeah, there's Ambrosius and Sir Didymus. All right. So Thomas, who do you have? I have Ludo. You got to say it with a little more bass. 
No, no. Um, okay, anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, he's got a speed of five, with that, which is the yellow die. He's got a wit, which is the green die, and his brawn is the black die. He's got starting willpower of four. So he's a tank. Oh yeah, he's a tank. And his special ability is Rock's Friends. Ludo's special ability, keep this card on your character sheet. Once per game, you can discard this card to roll an extra blue die for a fail brawn test without losing a willpower token, as described on page 13 of the rulebook. Never despair. Awesome. And there's a shot of the mini for Ludo. He loves his rocks. They're his best friends. And we have Christy, or Poison. Hey. Okay. Poison so Love? Poison, what is it? Poison Love. Poison Love. Okay, so I'm playing Sarah, who, her special ability is, it's not fair. No, it isn't. But that's the way it is. Sarah's special ability, keep this card on your character sheet. Once per game, you can discard this card and roll an extra blue die for a failed wit test without losing a willpower token. Never despair. Awesome. So what's her stats? Okay, so Sarah's speed is a purple. Her wit is also a purple. And her brawn is a green. And she thought that fairies did nice things like granting wishes. And she starts with five willpower tokens. Alrighty. Awesome, and there's Sarah again, and she starts an oubliette. All right, so as we go along, we play the game. I'll explain the gameplay and the rules and everything, and we see the little baby right there. That is your first person token, so that it gets passed around. Can anybody here remember the name of the baby? Ooh, ooh, me, me, pick me, pick me. His name is Toby. <laughs> Toby, and why do you know that? I don't want to discuss it. <laughs> she read it in the books. In the book. No. All right, so <laughs> let's have some fun play Labyrinth and let's see what happens if we can defeat this guy, Jareth, who is the Goblin King. Okay, so before we start the game, there's a couple of things we gotta do to the Labyrinth cards. The first thing we need to do, Thomas, is we gotta find the entrance to the Goblin City. So can you look through that and find the entrance to the Goblin City? This may take a little bit. Okay, so Thomas found the entrance to Goblin City. So what we do with this uh, Goblin City card is Thomas is going to deal out randomly 10 cards from the deck and place them on the table. And then we put this one on top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to shovel them 10 cards together plus the entrance to the Goblin City. And we're going to lay them face down on the table. And the Goblin City card, it says, lead this card on the space. Place Jareth in his castle. Place all guard stand-ups in the city. This space is considered to be next to the gates of the Goblin City. Space in the center of the board. So we're not going to place this on the board yet. We have to wait until we draw this card from the deck. All right, so Thomas put it on top. So Thomas, give them a shuffle for me. All right, and then take the other deck, the Labyrinth cards, and give them a quick shuffle. And place them on top of those. There, so hypothetically, the Goblin City card is any of the 11 cards from the bottom. So the objective for the game, again, is so that we have to keep flipping through cards and burning the cards through, and then after we do so, when we get the Goblin City, we have to do it and go and fight all of the evil characters, which are the standees right here, before we can fight Jareth, the Goblin King. Now, what makes this game a little bit more difficult is we have what is called the Goblin Clock. Now, instead of 12 hours, you can see there's 13 hours. So we have 13 turns to try to get the Goblin City and, and beat him. If we don't beat Jareth, that means we lose the game. And he takes Toby and he turns him into a goblin. One thing I forgot to do is uh, we have to take just one random card. Now, again, this could only apply to three players, could apply to five players. I'm not 100% sure, but we're just going to do a little bit of house rule here. So take the top card and we're going to burn it, which means we're not going to actually set it on fire. That game is just not in play for the game. So we're just going to take that and we're not going to use it. So therefore, so every time we do a card, we draw one and we defeat it, we have to put it on the bottom of the deck. So that way, 
we're not going to be able to tell exactly when we hit Goblin City because we're not going to be able to judge, okay, maybe the 11th card from it. Because there's always a card getting added to the bottom of it, which makes it a little bit more challenging. During the gameplay, you may hear some rattling in the background, such as this. It's because it's a fan. Uh, we kind of got a little bit of a heat wave going on, and I think it's like 32 degrees out or something like that. And again, this is like at 9 o'clock at night. So it's pretty hot here, so just bear with me with the, the little bit of poor audio. Okay, so I'm going first. According to the book, we are following in order of what the characters play. So Hoggle goes first, then Sir Didymus, and then Ludo, and then Sarah, and then last but not least, it's the Goblin King. So this game is originally set for four players, but you can also play five players where the fifth player can use Jareth and do all of his turns. So on the Hoggle, so Hoggle is going to try to get over to Sir Didymus and Ambrosius to make a team up. So his speed is a green die, so I'm going to roll a green die and see what happens here. Ah, whoa, that's really fast for Hoggle, a one. So he moved to one, and because it's an empty card space, so he draws his uh, Labyrinth card. Alright, so the card that I, uh, I drew here is called Fairy's Camp. Choose to avoid them, test speed versus one purple die. Or face them, test brawn versus one purple die and one black die. Success is leave this card on the space. Fail, lose two willpower. Ouch. Leave this card on the space. That is a really bad card to start off with. Especially yeah, for Hago. Thomas, like, did you even uh, shuffle these, these I cards? I shuffled them, but that's not we my fault. You picked it. We have video proof. <laughs> oh, that. Okay, so uh, first thing we do is the fairy's got to roll. So can somebody roll? the uh, purple die, because I'm going to choose my speed. Two. Beat that. <laughs> so now Hoggle got to roll two or better. Four. Yes. Yay. But the thing is, is I defeated him. I don't lose willpower. But what I have to do is I have to leave this card on the space. So when a card is left on the space, what that means is anybody who lands on the space has to do this test. There's no way of defeating it. Now, again, we want to try to keep these spaces on the board empty. And the reason why is so that when we do draw the Goblin City, entrance to the Goblin City, we have a space to lay it down. Because if we don't have an empty space, we can't draw the Goblin City card, which means we will lose the game. Okay, so next on the uh, Labyrinth is Sir Didymus, so which is played by Katie. So Katie, what is your speed? die. What color? Black. Alright, so take a roll and see what happens. Five. So you get to move five spaces. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention to his wall is that when Jareth will appear on any of these spaces from a card drawn, you cannot land on the same space as Jareth. You always have to move in the opposite direction. But where Jareth is on the, uh, the Goblin City right now, Sir Didymus can move in any direction he wants. So, so it is, can move over this way, or it can move that way to Ludo. It is your choice, Katie. I'm going to go this way towards Ludo. All right. Oh, so close. So, so close. Another thing that I'd like to point out is that if you were close to a character and you want to join him as a group and it comes time to roll your speed, you can choose your speed die or a lower speed die to try to get there. You have to roll an exact number to land with another character. All right, Katie, what's your card say? Um, false alarms. Test wit versus one red die. Success, leave this card on the space. Fail, lose one willpower and leave this card on the space. All righty, let's see what happens. Thomas is rolling for the bad guys. Roll the four. He rolled a four. So Katie, let's see what you get there. Ooh, tied it. Four. So this is a good point. So in the books, it says that whenever you roll and you tie with the monster or bad guy, we play a lot of monster games, so I'm gonna to refer to the the bad guys as monsters, so just bear with us here. So when you roll and it's a tie, the good guy always wins. Cool. So what do you do for your succeed? Just leave the card on the space. All right, so put your card on the space, and we'll go on to the next turn, which is going to be... Ludo. That's right. All right, so it is Ludo's turn, and Thomas, what are you going to do? So I'm going to move towards Ambrosia and Sir Didymus. So I'm going to use a red die instead of my yellow die to move by that, because it'll take less spaces. So yes. let's see what happens. 
Yeah, four. Got four. So again, he has to stick with the direction that he chose, and he has to move four. One, two, three, four. And you're in an empty space, so draw a card. All right, Thomas, what you got? Okay, so I got helping hands. The player who goes into, or go it is, choose odds, up or evens, and down. Then roll one blue die. If you roll what you choose, leave this card on the space. Otherwise, leave this card on the space, and all characters on the space lose one willpower and are moved to the oubliette. Oh. Yeah. And you know what happens on the oubliette, right? If you land on the oubliette, you go to sleep. So pretty much you're going to miss a turn. Hopefully not. So I got to roll a blue die, and I'm going to choose evens. Let's see what I get. This is even Stevens. And I got a 10, which is even. Nice. So what happens? This card just stays on the space. Nothing All right. It happens. So we fill the card up, the space up with the card, and we go on to the next turn, which brings us to lovely Sarah, who caused this whole thing, this whole mess to happen because she didn't want to watch Toby anymore. So she wished the Goblin King would come and take him to the Goblin City. Because right? it's not fair. <laughs> So it's Sarah's turn. What are you going to do there, Sarah? So Sarah has a speed of purple. So I'm going to roll, and I'm going to try and come meet up with you over here. With Hoggle? With Hoggle. All right, that's a lot of distance, but you're going to cut it down a bit. By seven. seven. All right, so she moves seven. Boom. Man. <laughs> oh, but, 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 but what do there's I have a card there. So you have to perform an action. I am so bad. I love this movie, and I called it Fairy's Camp. There's no fairies in this movie. It's the fireies camp, which is the ones that would rip their heads off. Well, not just take their heads off. It's not rip them off because it was, you know, a children's movie. You got to keep it, you know, uh, PG. G. Yeah, or PG. But they were able to fly around. They did a lot of dancing and everything, and they tried to take Sarah's head off. But, you know, as well as Sarah's as human. Yeah. So anyhow, uh, Poison yes. Love landed here. <laughs> so she has to perform what the card says. So just, the card is choose to avoid them, test speed versus one purple die, or face them, test brawn versus one purple die and one black die. And if you succeed, it's leave this card in space. We already went over this, but again, just for anybody who just joined in, uh, lose two willpower if you fail. Now, because if Sarah fails, because she joined up with Hollow, then Hoggle might be able to roll and rescue. But Sarah, let's see what you can do. All right, so my speed is the purple die. Are you kidding me? Zero. Which? Zero. Yeah, but it's not zero. Actually, when you roll a zero on the purple die, it means it's 10. Yay! So <laughs> you have, oh, nobody rolled for the... Uh... Well, they can do it now. Oh, okay, so you rolled versus one purple die, so you just rolled 10 for the bad guys. What? Yeah. So now you gotta roll again for Sarah. Wait, I, I can't roll for the bad guy against myself. Uh, we already you did it. You had me roll for you. Can't, no, can't she rolled my, for herself. I rolled for myself. Delete the previous clip because we did it wrong and plus they'd kill us really fast. All right, so Sarah rolled a seven and she landed right with Hoggle as a group. So. As I said before, it was really bad. I said fairy camp. There's no fairies in this movie. In this game. Jeez. It's fairies camp. It's the, the creatures, the puppets that would take their head off. They'd fly with their ears in the movie and everything. And they did a lot of singing and they wanted to take Sarah's head off. So again, what we got to do now is somebody got to ro roll for the fiery camp, the fireys. And then Sarah has to roll to see if she can beat it. So... Thomas, you go ahead and roll for Fiery. There we go. A four. A four. All right. All right, let's try this. So let's try to beat it. Six. Six. Oh, Woo. there it is. Six. Yeah. All right, so you did win. So you succeed. So you leave this card on the space. So that's not too bad. Okay, so since all of our, everybody took our first turn, what happens is it's Jareth the Goblin King. So. In, in the book, it says, you know, like for Jared, you, you turn the hour ahead by one. But the thing is, is that 
we don't know if we start at one so we move it to two or if we start by moving it to one. So we're just going to house rule this. So Katie is going to move it to round two. If we're playing this wrong, anybody who's watching this that played it and they know the difference, please comment below in the comment section and let us know. Again, this is our very first time for playing this game 100%. So you are going to witness some rules mistakes. And the best way to learn from our mistakes is by following you guys, the viewers who are very important to us. And we want you to comment below and give us thumbs up, thumbs down, tell us we rock, tell us we suck, just tell us something. All right, so I'm with round two. So it's Hoggle's turn first and he's with Sarah. So again, because if you agree, Sarah, yes, I'm calling you Sarah instead of poison, That's we're okay. gonna move as a group. So when we move as a group, we have to move by the lowest speed. Now Hoggle has a green die, which is a D6 or six sided die. What is your speed? Purple, so 10. So we have to move by Hoggle speed. So okay. I'm gonna grab the green and I'm gonna roll a three. That's a three, yes. Yep. So we can move either way. I wanna to try to get closer to Luda. Ludo, sorry, not Luda. Oh my God. So let's just move ahead three. <laughs> and what's so funny, Thomas? <laughs> Katie, what are you laughing at? Are we moving ahead three? Yes, we're going to move ahead three. Okay, Thank so you. one, two, three. Empty space, so let us pull a card, please. Okay, so Hoggle drew a really great card. The Worm. So if anybody remembers the movie, there's a little tiny room the top to Sora and the top to out for bounce. So this card, well, it simply states, Keep this card on your character sheet. Discard the card to roll an extra blue die for a failed wit test without losing a willpower token. You cannot use this card in the Goblin King City Maze. So that's going to be a big bonus. So that's just a little bit more power that we have as a group. On to Sir Didymus' turn. Let's go in, brushes! So it's Sir Dismas' turn, so what are you going to do there, Katie? I'm going to roll a lesser die than my speed, um, than my normal speed die, and try to meet up with Ludo. As a group, all right, good. See what you get. Three. Three. Oh, so close. Oh, very, very close, very close. And again, when you roll, you have to move the exact number. All right, Katie, what the card say? Jareth appears. Oh no! <laughs> Place Jareth on this space. Keep this card on your character sheet. When in the space, when in the same space as Sarah, immediately test wit versus one blue die. You cannot test as a group. Um, success discard this card. Fail discard this card and lose. And Sarah loses one willpower and falls asleep. You lose two willpower unless you are Sarah. Alrighty, but. You're not Sarah, you're Sir Didymus. And there's no Sarah on the space. So all you do then, I guess, is just keep that card onto you. But it's kind of like a hindrance for the whole game until, you know, because it's gonna stop us from linking up. Well, not really, because then we just have to try to fight it to win. So again, Jareth appeared to Sir Didymus and, you know, Sir Didymus is a really brave guy, and he's like, let's charge! Ah! Ambrosius! I can, I don't do the voices very well, but you know what? It's a game. Let's go on. Okay, so we're on to Ludo's turn. Now, one thing that we're just trying to find in the book, I do remember, because uh, in the book I've seen it somewhere, so that when Jareth does appear, you cannot move and pass by him or land on the same space as him. You have to automatically go in the wrong direction. If we are playing this wrong, just please comment below. But right now we're gonna play that house rule and we're gonna do this even if it is not the rule or not, but we're gonna play it like that. So, on to Ludo's turn. Ludo! Okay, so because Jareth's right next to me, I can't meet up with Sir Dennis. So I'm gonna have to go the opposite way and I'm going to use my yellow die, with that, which is my speed, on that to try and get as far away as possible. And that's a six. A six. So you move six spaces. 
Hmm? Without the card. Six. All right. Okay, so I got Jareth appears. Turn back. Jareth appears on this space. Test wit versus one blue die. You cannot test as a group. Success, you discard this card. Fail, discard this card. The character loses one willpower and move to Hoggle's starting space. Lovely. So, oh look, we just moved over. Jareth appears, just like that. Hi Ludo, how you doing? All right, so the bad guy who is played by Katie right now, how bad are you, Katie? Evil. Oh. Okay, <laughs> so let's roll your blue die and see what happens. <laughs> and we have... You're welcome. A one. Woo! Whoa. Okay. I'll beat that. <laughs> All right. Um, Thomas, you don't really have to roll because even if you tie with the one, you still win because you're a yeah, good guy. I know, I know, but I still have to roll the green die. Okay. And I got a three. Uh, where's the green die? Oh, there it is. Three. Okay, so you succeed. So what does the card say? I just discard this card. Nice. Nothing so we Yay. have a clear space. What? Ludo succeeded and Jareth does nothing. Ha 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 ha. Camera shake. Okay, so next is Sarah's turn and she's with her best bud, Hoggle. Ah, uh, Hoggle. But Hoggle is much slower than me. He uses the green die, so I have to roll with the green die. So let's go try and meet up with Sir Didymus. We got a six. Nice, so let's see where we land. One, two, three, four, five, oh. six. Okay, so. Okay, so the card that on the space it is, it goes, the player whose go it is chooses odds or evens. Then rolls one blue die. So, let's roll a blue die. I'm gonna choose odds, because I'm an oddball. Ah, oh, and I got Eight. Uh oh, what happens okay. here? So. If you roll what you choose, which I did not, leave this card. Otherwise, leave this card on the space and all characters on the space lose one HP and move to the oubliette. Sorry, one willpower. Hoggle. So each of us <laughs> to the oubliette. Lose one willpower and we go to oubliette. And now, since we went to oubliette, if you land on it, which we technically did land onto it, we go to sleep. Sorry, Hoggle. But there's a benefit to this, though, because what will happen is we, we're going to miss a turn, and we don't have to roll a die to try to get uh, willpower. So we just get another willpower. We'll just get the one we lost. That's okay. right. Okay, so that's not too bad, then. I'm with going on the okay. game. All right, so next we have to go to Jareth's turn, the Goblin King, which is played by Evil. Evil. Katie. All right, Katie. Do your worst. Advance the clock. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. All right. So then it's on to my turn, which is Hoggle. And because we're at the oubliette, I do miss a turn. But really, my turn is standing up because I wake up. But the bonus is, is that willpower token that I have lost goes back. So I'm back to my general willpower. Just a little uh, side note on the willpower is my starting willpower, as you can see here, is three, but I can also gain more willpower. So if I didn't lose that willpower, I'd automatically gain another one. But once you hit your maximum, which is six for every character, you cannot gain any more. You will automatically lose that willpower if you're gonna gain it. So just keep that in mind. All right, so it's on to Sir Didymus and the Ambrosius turn. So, Sir Didymus. You're, you're, do you have like an identity complex here? You're Sir Didymus, you're the bad guy, and you're Jareth. Yeah, the so bad right guy So right now I should do a normal angle like this because you're a good guy. Evil, good. Evil, good. <laughs> All right, so Sir Didymus, what are you going to do? I'm gonna roll my die, my speed die, to go that way. All right, so just as, uh, again, we're not sure about this, this is true or not, but we're doing the house roll. So instead of Sir Didymus moving this way, you can't move in the same direction. That is Jareth, the closest that we're saying. So Katie's gonna move this way. So roll the die and see what happens. And you get an eight. All right, so in the book, there's the fiery guy right there. So if anybody's seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If not, 
These guys, if they're very really mischievous, they can pull their limbs off, still stay alive, and because of their ears, they can fly their heads up with no body. Really cool. That's what took me to there. Yes. So Katie rolled an eight, which brought her to here, which is Fiery's camp. So in here, because she landed, the card is already in play, so she has to test her speed versus one purple die, or she can test her brawn versus a purple die and a black die. But Sir Didymus is on Ambrosius, and Ambrosius is very fast. So Katie has chose to test her speed against one purple, and I'm gonna be the bad guy this time. Evil. One. Oh! Can you beat one? Wait, 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 Six. wait. Six, you beat it. So, if you succeed, it says, leave this card on the space. Good job, Katie. So, Ludo, aka Thomas, looked in the rule book and he did find in the rule book that we were actually playing it right, so it's not house rule. So, when Jareth is on the board and it is a character's turn, they have to move in the opposite direction of where Jareth is. So, which can be really troublesome if we're trying to team up with another team player. So, Ludo got a hightail it out of there, or Jareth got to appear somewhere else. So, on with the next turn, which I think is Ludo's turn. Yep. All right, so it is on to Ludo's turn, and what are you doing there, Thomas? All right, well, I want to get closer to Hoggle and Sarah, but I don't want to land on the Ubu yet. I'm going to roll a smaller die than what I would usually to see if I can get close, or if passed, like that, but not on it. So your speed originally is a yellow die, and you're choosing a green die, which is a yep. D6. Alright, let's see what you get. And I got a three. Three. So I go one, two, three. Whoa, that was so close. Ludo gets to choose a card. So I got ambushed by Fireys. I test brawn versus one purple die. If I succeed, I discard this card. If I fail, I lose one willpower and I, lose, I leave the card on the space. All right, so Katie, being the evil fiery again, evil look, <laughs> is going to roll first for the bad guy. And the bad guy gets eight. All right. So well, Ludo, what are you gonna do? I get to test by brawn, which is the black die. And Ludo is a tank. Oh yeah, let's see here. Let's see what you get. And I got an eight. Eight. And good guys win the tie. Yeehaw! So what happens in the pass? In the pass, I just discard this card. Nice. Which means that we have nothing on the board. Excellent. So it goes on the bottom of the deck. And again, just to keep uh, reiterating and talking more about this, we have no idea when the goblin, the entrance of the goblin city is going to happen now because we haven't been keeping track. Well, I know I haven't, but. Probably somebody over here has been keeping track. No, <laughs> Katie usually is really good at doing that stuff, but this time she hasn't. So we don't know when we're gonna come up with this. So again, the game can be very, very fun and challenging if we put in like the uh, the special circumstance cards, but we didn't again, because this is the first one. So we're going to go on to Sarah's turn. So I'm just gonna stand up, because I'm waking up now, you know? And I'm regaining my willpower. Nice. So I'm back up to five now. Wow, so is, she's got strong will. She starts with five. Yeah, and you're your best friend again, too. Yay, Hoggle. <laughs> Turn the clock. Okay. <laughs> the clock is a tick and we're at round four. We only have to round 13 again before the Goblin King. Uh-oh. So on to Hoggle's turn. My bad, Hoggle was here where Ludo was, not in Goblin City. I mean, Jareth? Jareth. Go, oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in my evil mode, see, so you just, I don't know. Anyhow, so Jareth is there, so it's on to Hoggle's turn. Okay, so we have to go with the slowest, which Hoggle is between Sarah and Hoggle. So we're gonna roll, and I get a six, what? All right, so Hoggle and Sarah, we're sticking as a group, so we're moving six. Let's go get Sir Didymus. Run oh, away. 
This is so close. We're one away. I'm sorry, Sir Denimus. Not really, because um, we don't have to test against those fireys. Ambrosius is just looking and shaking his head and lifting his leg. And you know what happens when dogs lift their legs. <laughs> All right, so the card that Hoggle drew is fairies. Now with fairies, I said there's no fairies in the game, but you know what? They're fairies. What am I talking about? Hoggle lies, which you know from the movie. Ha ha ha! So anyhow, fairies. Test brawn versus one red die. If I succeed, I leave this card on the space. If I fail, I lose one willpower and leave this card on the space. Hmm. So let's see what's going to happen. Yeah. So, the fairy gets to roll a red die first, and look who's the evil fairy. Okay, <laughs> Katie, let's roll, see what you get. A one. Okay, you know, according to the rule book, we get to roll as a group, so my brawn is yellow, and Sarah's brawn is green. So let's roll and see if we get to higher. Eight and a four, we beat one. Ha! In your face, fairy! In your face! <laughs> that is a very disappointed fairy face. She's yes. not amused. Um, she's giving me that, I'm going to kill you off camera look. <laughs> um, we will uh, continue the game after I come back from the hospital. <laughs> uh, one thing I forgot to do recording wise is Toby, which is the first player token, whenever the first player goes, we hand it over to the next one and so on and so forth. But we're keeping track of everything. So Toby is just hiding right here by Hoggle because he's the same height as him. And Toby is protecting Hoggle because Hoggle is a coward. Yeah. Okay, so Sir Didymus' turn. So now Sir Didymus and Ambrosia is going to what? Again, this is a good guy angle. I'm going to roll um, the purple die. Okay. Um, actually, can I roll the green one instead? Sure. You can roll the red one if you want. No, I'm going to roll the green one, um, to go this way. And you got a two. Gloomy Scary Forest. Each character on this space tests wit versus one purple die. You cannot test as a group. Success, leave this card on this space. Fail, each character fail... Each character that fails loses one willpower and is moved to the Bog of Eternal Stench. Ooh, that's no good. And if you get moved to the Bog of Eternal Stench, what happens? You get a smell bad token. And if that happens, we will explain. So right now, Sir Didymus is going to roll. And who's going to roll for the other person? Thomas. Thomas is going to be the bad guy. Okay. Right. Evil angle. <laughs> good angle. No, that that's just a psychotic angle. Anyhow, <laughs> Thomas, do your roll. <laughs> Alright. Got a nine. Oh, Ooh. sorry. And what what's I literally cannot beat that. What's the highest that Eight. you can get? Okay, so so what you can do though, because you have some willpower, is that you can sell one of your willpower to roll a black die. Um, or I can just use this. And what is that? Um, this is my special power, so um oh no. Sorry, wrong one. Yes, I was going to um. say. So read your special power there, please. Oh, wait, no, that's for brawn only. Okay. So after a little bit of uh, consideration, Katie, what are you going to do there? I'm going to sell one of my willpower. All right. Um, and you and... get to roll the black die. Sorry. Okay. So you have to beat a nine. Oh, there you oh, go. Well so done. You, you get a nine. So good guys tie. Good angle. Evil angle. Good angle. Oh, look at this smile. Okay. So you just kicked the <laughs> pants off of Thomas. Okay. And and the gloomy, scary forest card just stays in the space. So just to recap, we still have a lot of openings on the board here, but you can see there's some cards that we cannot remove regardless. Just like the one that uh, Ambrosius just did, the gloomy scary forest so this will stay the entire game on the space so it is now ludo's turn and what is ludo going to do well i'm going to try and move closer to hoggle and sarah yes yeah. you don't have a choice really right no no i don't <laughs> and why not just jareth's right there that's right so 
What die? Are you going to roll his normal speed die? Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to roll a green die instead, so I'm not going too far. So I don't actually want to catch up to them because there's quite a few cards over there. All right, see what you roll. Roll the four. Four. All right, so Ludo moves four. Thank Empty you. space, and you draw a card. Okay, so I got snares. Test wit versus one green die. Success, leave this card on the space. Fail, leave this card on the space. Characters on the space cannot rest or move, but must test wit again until it's their go. This continues until the test is passed. Ooh. Evil Katie. Evil look. Is rolling the green die. And a one. One. Like, I'm good. Yeah. All right. Gotta roll a green. <laughs> and I tied. And a one. So one against one, and the good guy wins. Evil loses. All right, so it's on to Sarah's turn. So Sarah, what are you going to do? Okay, so I think I'm going to roll a red one so that we could try and catch up with Sir Didymus over there. Let's try this. Two. So Sarah and Hoggle. You got it? They are going hands off. Right here, so very close. All very right. close. And we have a card. All right. All right, so I pulled a card. The two knockers. Test wit versus one purple die. Success, leave this card on the space. Fail, lose one willpower and leave this card on the space. So regardless, this card is left on the space. All right. So my wit is a purple die. And my wit is a black die, but then both of us can roll at the same time. So first it's the bad guy rolling mm -hmm. first. And it's gonna be evil. Do your worst. Five. All right. All right. All right. All right, so we get the roll, so let's do this. Ah! Five and five. Wait, that was that, a, it was, it was can a five. I, can I redo that? that? that no. <laughs> it was a five, though. That was a five. Yeah. Now we're so in sync. Five and five, and what did evil roll? Five. Five, so good guys win. Yeah. Bye, bye, good guys. <laughs> That's right. Yay. So, Hoggle and Sarah save the day. So what does it mean if we, we pass? Okay. Read it again, please. If we pass, we just leave the card on the space. All right, so let's put them there. And now it is... Dun, dun, dun! Evil. Jareth. Katie's turn. All righty. So we advance the goblin clock to one hour. Okay, so we're at round five now. So it's on to Hoggle's turn. Yay. Okay, so what we did is we just read the cards because we have a choice here that we can move and roll a red die to go to Sir Didymus, or we can roll the green die and move to Ludo. Ludo! So anyhow, what we're going to do is if we go here, we may end up going to the Bog of Eternal Stench, and that smell bad. We don't want to do that. <laughs> so we are going to go to here. So. Hoggle's going to roll his green because he is a slower up to two and we have to roll the slower. So let's see what happens. We got two. So we move. Oh, lovely. We move to the fatties. So the fairies, what we have to do is test brown versus one red die. Success. Leave this card on the space. If we fail, we we'll lose one willpower and leave this card on the space. So we're going to go to evil fairy. First, <laughs> let's see what you get. And we get a three. So now, because we are a team, we get to roll both of our bronze. Now I get a yellow. And I get a green. All right, so let's see what happens. Oh, you get a three, and I get a five. So guess what? Evil Fairy, we just clipped your wings. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're on to Sir Didymus' turn. So what are you going to do, Sir Didymus? I'm going to roll the red die and try to get to Sarah and Hoggle. Oh, it's a good choice. So we only have three spaces away. Let's see what happens here. We have one. So we have the two knockers. So it's a test wit versus one purple die. Success. Leave this card on the space. Fail is you lose one willpower and leave this card on the space. So... Which versus one purple die? Who's going to be the evil one? Oh, I'm going to be the evil in this Evil time. shot. Okay, let's do this. And you get 
Uh, three. Let's see what Sardinus gets. Um, six. six. Nice. So guess what, Sardinus? You succeeded and you have beat the two knockers. Beat that, two knockers! So next on the labyrinth is Ludo. So Ludo, what are you going to do? I am going to roll the red die with that and meet up, hopefully, with Hoggle and Sarah. All right, so let's see what happens. Two, two spaces. So Ludo is going to go one, two, very close, but not close enough. Okay, so I got the fairy lichen. Fairy what? Lichen. Lichen? Lichen. Okay. I apologize if I didn't say it right. It says, spooky, no effect, leave this card on the space. That's kind of lucky, So it sucks at the same time. It, it, it's lucky, yeah, but it sucks because it fills the space, which is bad. So I think next on the turn is going to be Sarah, but look how close we are. Like, all of us, we're like so close. So we may link up here, we, we may, may not, but we'll see. But the whole thing is the Goblin King is all the way over there. So as long as we don't pull a card that says Jareth appears. Okay. okay, so Sarah and Hoggle is going to go forward to try to link up with Sir Didymus. So let's see Sarah. Okay, so I'm gonna roll a red die trying to link up over here. You were right. One. You, what was that? It. Say it again. You called it. You said you think you feel like I'm gonna get a one this time and I did get a one this That's time. That's right. But you already said you were going this way. Yeah, so. so let's deal with these fireies. Oh, the fiery camp again. Yeah. Oh, these buggers. Okay, let's see what happens. All right, so as Hoggle and Sarah talked, we are going to try the first one, which is we are going to fight the speed versus one purple die for the fiery. So fiery, roll your worst. Oh, that was actually a pretty good roll. <laughs> Darn, that was a six. All right. Okay, so. Okay, so Hoggle and Sarah's gonna roll to see if we can beat the six. Ah. Five. Four. Four. Damn it. Okay. What happens now? So now, you have a choice that you could sell one of your willpower to roll the black die. Ooh. Or we can take the fail, and the fail is lose two willpower. I'll so, sell one. Yeah, I think that's a probably a good idea. So <laughs> now you have to try to beat a six. Or your six, that's right. All so right. let's see if we can do it. Well, that was a oh, really, I couldn't even, a five. Oh, no. So, you um, still lose two. we still lose. But I rolled two fives from two separate decks. Yeah, but that just. I, I know it doesn't count, but I'm just. It really hurts. So do you know what? We both lose two willpower. Or no, Are wait, you, wait, wait. You, why can't you use a willpower and roll the black die? This card is card to roll an extra blue die on a failed wit test, but we didn't do a wit test, we did, did speed. we? We did speed. Okay, so no. Hang on one second there, viewers. We're going to try to think of what we can do. Okay, so we just looked at our special abilities and also, like, I have the worm card, but neither our special abilities or the worm card will give us an advantage over the failed test that we just did. Now, the one thing that I'm not sure of is because Sarah sold one of her willpowers to roll the black die. And then rolled another five. <laughs> and rolled another five, that's right. Now, I don't know if I can sell one of my willpower to roll the black die or not. So, for now, we're just going to play it as it is and lose one willpower each. But, if we're doing this incorrect, because we're playing as a team, and you think we're doing it incorrect, please comment below and let us know the proper way so that when we play the next time, we are playing it, playing it correctly. <sighs> All right, so willpower. one willpower is gone. Oh, look at this. Like She's even putting her hands out for the willpower. Look, look at the evil one. It's like, give me, give me, give me the willpower. <laughs> evil. You got to do the fingers. Mm. Oh, God. There it is. Okay, so yeah. So we're in trouble. And the reason why we're in trouble is because Sarah's down to three willpower. Mm -hmm. Hoggle is down to two willpower. So we need to start doing something. Either we're going to have to try to go to the oubliette and go to sleep or stay where you are and rest and roll a green die. And if we roll a four or higher, we get a willpower back. I have a question about that, actually. All right, so it is on to the Goblin King 
or Goblin Queen, whatever way you want to call it. So, Goblin Queen King, Do you it. are going to advance the clock to six. So we're almost halfway done of the turns. And we did not flip over the entrance to the Goblin City yet. So we got a little bit of work ahead of us. So we have to really start trying to go as a team. Um, we've been trying to team up this whole game. Uh, one thing I noticed with this game is we it's better to play as a team and move as a team because when we get, if we do get to the Goblin City, What's going to happen is we can all fight the bad guys. Yeah. But if only one of us fight the bad guys, it may be a little bit more difficult. So, we're on to the next turn, which is Hoggle's turn. If you want to see the final part to the game playthrough of the Labyrinth, click on the link below and we'll take you there and you'll be able to see what finally happened in the Labyrinth.